Hi everybody. So today we're going to be working with masking fluid. So I don't know how well you can see it there, but this is Windsor Newton um, masking fluid. And what masking fluid is, it's a latex based liquid product that basically when you put it on your paper, you are trying to preserve bits of white on your paper. And then you put the masking fluid on, you it dries, and then you paint over it. And then you are going to remove the masking fluid afterwards and all the uh, areas where it was are left untouched and crisp white because it is the paper underneath. So it's a wonderful thing to use. You can achieve great effects. Um, I got the idea for this video actually from this amazing, probably one of my favorite watercolorists right now. His name is Kanta Hakusari and he is on YouTube. I'm gonna link the video below where I got the inspiration for this, but he essentially, and actually I think in the video I'm talking about, I think it's Yoko Hakusari who does the video. I'm not sure if that's um, his wife. I'm not sure, but I believe I'm, I need to credit Yoko Hakusari, but essentially um, whoever it was that did that video, they used masking fluid for a snowy winter scene. And I thought what a perfect thing to experiment with. So I decided to use a brush to see because there's different ways you can apply masking fluid. You can do it with a brush as you can see I'm doing here. So I'm just doing like a quick pine tree. I really wanted this to just be a quick exercise, not really a painting, but just to kind of test it out. I haven't used masking fluid in a while. So again, one way to do it is paint, uh, or I'm sorry, paintbrush. Here I'm, I'm basically just using the bottom of the paintbrush, like just the end of it um, to apply like a thin line. As you can see, I'm doing like a bare winter tree at that part. You can also use a dip pen if you've used anything like that for ink to apply masking fluid here you can see it a little better. So I'm literally just trying to see I'm doing some frosted branches now the way they kind of appear on sort of a, a weeping hemlock tree I believe is what they're called. So I'm just experimenting with these effects and see how they look. I have seen masking fluid applied where when it was done with a brush it didn't create a totally opaque effect, meaning you could still see through some of it when you applied paint afterwards. So I kind of wanted to see what would happen here when I used um, first the brush and then just these little, you know, the end of the paintbrush. You can see I just literally turned the paintbrush around and I'm using the other end to create these bare branches. And there are lots of different ways you can apply it. Like there are people that use, I mean, people get so creative with this. Basically, whatever you want to apply it with that will create the effect you use. Some people crinkle plastic and I tried to do that. I used a little bit or like a paper towel and you can apply it with that and sometimes it gets an effect like leaves or bushes. So here I go with that. So I'm trying to see how that looks in terms of a winter forest. This is just going to inform how I use it in the future. So again, we're just experimenting here. Here I'm trying to do some little bushes, see how that goes and some more Snow, now snow is a wonderful thing to have masking fluid for, obviously. A lot of times when I have white in my in my paintings, I use gouache. I go back in afterwards or throughout. And gouache, we're gonna do a whole um, video on gouache separately, but gouache is an opaque watercolor, meaning it's the kind of watercolor that you cannot see through. I believe they're chalk-based, but I need to research that. I think that's the difference between them and standard watercolors. So here we go, the masking fluid has now dried. So it's totally dry, it takes a very short time to dry, it's like a few minutes. Now I'm wetting the paper completely, just painting right over it with um, just water. And then we're gonna add the paint, and it's pretty cool You can when the effect, so see, it's almost like a, like a, I don't know, invisible ink type thing, isn't that neat? Um, so yeah, so I was like, okay, well, what I learned from that was that actually the tree, when I was using the brush for the pine tree, uh, it was actually not as opaque as I thought, or I'm not as um, transparent as I thought. It ended up pretty thick and pretty opaque. So that is one good thing to note. So here I'm sort of prepping for what I know is going to be a reflection under these trees. So I'm thinking of it as like a lake, a frozen lake in the tree line. So I'm darkening it a little bit. And then of course with watercolors, which by the way, Daniel Smith watercolors almost always. And this is cold press watercolor paper. 
So of course they do these lovely drip effects. And then for the reflection of the white trees, I am literally just pulling a dry brush through the damp paint and paper. So you can see me doing that. And also, so I'm adding dark bits too, because you're going to have the white and you're going to have the dark. So we just want that dragging effect is what's going to create that reflection look. So now I'm getting ready to show you. We're going to let the paint dry. And here, we, here it is, it's all dry. So now, as soon as the paint is dry, it's time to remove the masking fluid. So here, learn from my mistakes, folks. Hopefully my mistakes help you here. So basically, I am removing it with just a rubber eraser. There's many ways you can remove masking fluid. Um, this grew very tedious. This was very, very tedious. I think there's a rubber cement pickup bar that you can get. I'm going to link that down below too that is much more effective. So look what happened. Basically, removing it with an eraser, it just turns into this peeling mess where it took a very long time to get rid of. Um, I did eventually get rid of all of it and it really wasn't that terrible, but I know that there's much more efficient ways and you can see it left a little bit of those pink residue. So that was good to know for this experiment. So now I am just experimenting with what kind of texture do I want to put into the white, which is, you know, you're always going to be wondering that. I mean, this, let's uh, be honest, this is a lot of masking fluid. This is essentially the entire image is created really with just um, leaning so heavily on the masking fluid. A lot of times the masking fluid when people use it is really just to accent um, what's already there. This, so this is pretty dramatic. Um, so here I am attempting to add just a faded, the faded trees in the background by doing something similar, dragging my brush through the wet paint. I'm adding some texture to the trees, seeing what works, what doesn't work. This is very fun and interesting to do with masking fluid and see um, essentially what ends up looking all right. So with this, I do love that sort of frozen lake look. And I didn't know how it would look to have all these different types of trees together. I don't think that's really the thing that is the takeaway. It's more that the masking fluid is pretty dramatic. Um, the next time I use it, I'm gonna try a bit more of a subtle effect. So here I'm trying to define the tree line again a little more. And then I realized that to do that effectively, I was also gonna have to emphasize the um, just the shadows under the trees, but then also the white reflection on the snowy lake. And you can see that the parts of the masking fluid, the um, residue, that that's having an effect also on the painting. So like I said, I'm going to link the masking fluid and the rubber pickup below so that you can see what I think is probably the most effective and best way to actually remove the fluid. So here I am trying to create more of that white reflection so that it's very clear. Watercolors are so much fun to use, guys. And it's especially fun to get into them when they're sort of half dry and the effects you can create when they're in that half dry state. And here in a minute, you're gonna see that I started using some gouache to try to add some more background trees Give it a little more depth. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for coming on this journey with me. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. And I will see you next week. Thanks so much.